Hey guys, Rhonda Draculas here, RK3 Designs, and we're going to do a Throwback Thursday, meaning we're gonna go way back into my past and bring in some faux finishing fun techniques. So, can't wait to show you what we've got. We're gonna do this in steps. I'm gonna show you first how I lay down my texture median and then how we roll through it and leave an imprint or a design. Then we're gonna go to a piece that I did last night that's already dried, and we're gonna tell you how to take it from there to the next level. So we're gonna start off, I've got a piece of MDF board, three quarter inch, I've just painted it with bare paint and primer, white. You could do that any color. I'm going for a driftwood look, so that's why I painted it white. So let's get started. Start off with my uh, trial. These are Japanese trials, I love them. I'll put a link so that you guys can see where all of my supplies are coming from. But I'm gonna take the texture median and I'm just gonna put it on the trial. It's very thick. There's so many texture medians out there to use. I'm using a, a product by Proceeds that I've used for years. It dries super hard and I really like it. So I'm gonna put it down on the board. Now, with this technique, you want it to go on fairly thin. You don't need it really, really thick. And I know that it, because it's white, you're gonna have a hard time seeing it through the camera. But I'm, it's, it's super thin, not, not even an eighth of an inch thick. I'm just rolling it out. Really not worried about it being perfect. Doesn't have to be super smooth because when I use my roller, I'm gonna take a, a lot of those lines and imperfections out. Adding a little bit more. Barely put any pressure down. Rolling that out. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a little more of the faux finishing techniques ever so often. I've got a lot of really fun projects that we can do. And if you guys are interested in that, I'd love to hear your uh, opinions. Okay, so I have it laid down. Do a really quick run by. Now, if this were an actual table that I was gonna do instead of just a sample board, I would clean up my edges a lot better. Uh, I am gonna sand this down when it gets dry. So the more you can clean up your edges, the more you take that extra material away, the easier it is and the faster it is to go through the sanding process. But again, this is just a quick sample board so that you guys can see what I did before we go to the next step. All right, so one of my favorite things in the world are stamping rollers. Love, love, love them. There's several uh, that I use. Um, I love the rollers from um, APS, Artistic Painting Studio. Those are the ones I've used all through my career and they're the red ones and they come with so many different designs. And I'm gonna show you this one as well as another one that I have that we've used for concrete. I wanted to see if it would work. And so I'm gonna pull this one out and I will uh, get you guys a link to where you can get these as well. So first of all, let's start with the concrete roller. It's a lot heavier, it's a lot thicker, so it's not as easy to use, but because of the pattern that's on the roller, I really wanted to play with this one today. So I'm gonna use these rollers side by side because I want you guys to see the difference, but in the next step of the project, just know I did it with this one. We're gonna start off with the blue roller and I'm gonna use constant pressure, equal pressure all the way down. I'm gonna line up my edge of my roller to the edge of the board and that's what I'm gonna watch. That helps me keep it straight. When you first look at it, you're thinking, I made a mess because we have all of these highs and all of these lows, but that's actually gonna give me some really cool texture and design for when we go to the next step, 
where we glaze. I'll wait till this dries, then I'll sand down the highs. I still want highs and lows, but I don't want pointy peaks. So I want to make it nice and smooth and then paint it and go to the next step. Now, let's say that you did this and you didn't like it. That's okay. You just take your trial and you smooth back over it and you do it again. That's why I really like this product. You've got a lot of open time. This time, I'm going to use the red roller. Now this is the roller that's got the wood grain on it. And I'm going to show you a neat technique to where you can make your knots and your grain look a little more realistic. So I'm going to start again, like I did on the blue. I'm going to start rolling, but then every so often I'm going to hold my roller and I'm going to let it slide so that I'm making those grains longer and then I'm going to roll it and then I'm going to let it slide and then I'm going to roll it. Now you can see when I held it, how it made that knot a little elongated and it made my grains a little longer and a little more realistic as opposed to if I did this, not holding it and I just rolled it. Now I've got a pattern that's just very symmetrical. I've just recreated it. Every time the roller rolled, it just recreated the same pattern, which is fine. If that's what you want, you can also alternate it. Sometimes you can hold it slide. Sometimes you can just let it roll. So now what we do is we let this dry overnight, let all of that moisture get out, and then we'll continue um, with paint. Then we would glaze, and then we're gonna pour epoxy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the piece I did last night and we'll continue. I'm taking the piece that I did last night. I rolled the roller through it. I used the big blue roller uh, and I created this board here and uh, let it dry, sanded it down a little bit, not a lot because I still want my texture to stay. I still want to run my hand across this and feel the highs and lows, but I don't want those highs and lows to be sharp and to be super deep. So I ran my sander over it nice and smooth, two coats, a uh, bare paint and primer and one in white satin. You could use anything that you want. Uh, this is just happens to be what I used because I'm kind of going to lean towards a um, driftwood effect on this piece. So the next step after your paint's dried is glazing. Glazing is um, a process to where you lay down a thin paint. Something has been added to that paint to give you workability, to let you move that paint around, to give you a longer open time. And it's the generic word for that is usually a glaze. There's a million glazes out there on the market and you can make your own. General Finishes has a fantastic glaze. It's all in one. It's in a can. You don't have to mix anything to it. I love this glaze and I use it a lot. It comes in several different colors. That's one option. Another option is to make your own glaze with paint, whatever brand that you want to use. Most brands, not all of them, but most brands can be made into a, uh, a glaze and then some type of glazing medium. In this case, I'm using my medium from uh, Proceeds and I really like it. A little bit goes a long way. So that's another option. You could also use acrylic paint and you can use water to make a glaze or you can use medium to make a glaze. If you use water, your open time is gonna be very, very, very short because basically all you're doing is thinning out your paint so that you can move it. It's a real economical option if you don't need a lot of open time. Dixie Bell makes a really cool water-based glaze called Voodoo and it's really fun. We're gonna try that a little bit too. Um, and then you can also use an actual stain for wood. This is a great option. You can thin it out with uh, mineral spirits if you wanna pull it back off and I'll show you what I mean here in just a little bit. All right, so we've got several different glazes here. 
I'm gonna actually show you several different ways to do it and we'll just see what we like the best and go on from there. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the pre-made glaze first. This is kind of my go-to glaze um, because I don't have to worry about mixing it and all that stuff. This is by General Finishes. Now it's gonna be a little bit dark for what I want to do in this piece, but that's okay. I'm gonna pull it off quite a bit, but I want you to see how this works. So I'm just gonna take a chip brush and I'm gonna lay that glaze down, work it into your texture medium. You really wanna get it down into those highs and lows. And I'm gonna kinda make a line here so we can see the different ways we can glaze. Now, once you put that glaze on there and you start pulling it off, you're really gonna be able to see the, uh, the texture pop. This is just a regular shop towels. I like shop towels, they don't have a lot of lint, but then you can also use uh, cheesecloth. This is an excellent uh, way to pull glaze off of a finish is with your cheesecloth. I'm gonna start off and pull most of the glaze off with my shop towel, and then we'll finish up with the cheesecloth. So I'm just gonna rub it, and again, this is gonna be something that's your preference. Depending on how much of that glaze you wanna see or how much of the background you wanna see. So I'm just gonna start pulling it off. I'm keeping it in a strie pattern of pulling it off because this is a straight lined pattern. I don't wanna rub it in a circle because then that would bleed through onto my pattern. Now that's looking pretty cool, pretty dark. So if I want to thin it out even more, take my water bottle, and that's all that's in here is just plain water. Then I can come with my cheesecloth and I can pull even more off. Now, as I pour more off, I'll see more of that background and I won't see quite the depth in the pattern. So you can see by pulling more off, I've taken it out of the lows. If you wanted to go back and randomly add, you could go back and say, well, I'd kind of like to have more on the edges, make this really look like a piece of wood. And that's where you just have fun with it. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. If you want one, maybe one area to be a little bit lighter than the other, come in with the wet cloth and just pull off certain areas. All right, so that's one way to do it. That's with a pre-made glaze from General Finishes. Now let's make our own glaze. I'm gonna come in with some text, uh, some glazing medium. This is from Proceeds. Tiny bit, little bit. That's all I'm gonna use, all right? I'm gonna do my texture medium about 50% or half and half uh, ratio with the paint that I'm adding. Then if I wanna uh, thin it out a little bit more, I'll add a little bit of water. So now this is General Finishes acrylic paint. And I'm gonna stir that up. So now I've got a very thin mixture of paint and glazing material. If I wanted to add a little bit more paint to get it a little more opaque, I can definitely do this. I don't want a very opaque finish. I want a very translucent uh, glaze. So I'm not gonna add a whole lot of paint. I am gonna add a little bit of water just to make it a little more runny. Like I said, I really want this to be very runny. All right, I'm gonna pour that out. Take a chip brush. Rub it in. Now you can see how this glaze is a lot thinner than my first glaze. 
And that's okay. I could have made it a lot thicker if I wanted to. But I just trying to get some background color on here. All right. Really work it into those crevices. I really worked it into those lows and now I'm gonna pull it off. Again, I'm gonna be very light. I really like the strie pattern that I'm getting from using the, the uh, cheesecloth. So I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave those little lines because it makes it look very realistic. And this is about how dark I wanted it because I'm gonna do a couple of other things on top of this. All right, okay. Now, again, if you wanted to go darker, you would just add a little bit more paint. So that's a really economical way to make your own glaze. Again, we can use an even less expensive paint, which is, this is just a basic acrylic paint we get at Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna take it, and because I want a gray, I'm gonna start off with white. Pretty thick paint. So I'll be definitely adding some water. A little bit of black. So I wanna do my color mix first and see if that's about what I'm looking at. All right, so now I can add water if I were gonna do a really quick glaze where I didn't need a lot of open time or I can add a uh, glaze median. Again, I'm going for a pretty thin material. I'm gonna add some water now. And lay it down. All right, so this one's a little thicker. And I think, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this over what I did earlier because I really like this color. And this is how you can go lay, layering glazes as well to get a really cool natural look. And it's not thick. As I do this, I'm just hitting my highs. Depending on what glazing medium you use will dictate how much open time you have. So if you're just using water, your open time is not gonna be very long. So you're not gonna wanna let have that paint sit on your surface for very long. Okay, yeah, I'm really liking that. Okay, yeah, that's probably my favorite right now. I like the, the color. I like that it's really going down into those low areas. Let's try the actual um, an actual stain. This is a wood stain. Now, mind you, I'm going over a painted surface. You can see this is very runny. You want to make sure, even though you think you've shaken it up really well, on these stains, a lot of the material will settle to the bottom of the can. So you do need to make sure that you stir it up very well. This is not water-based. This is not gonna clean up with soap and water. So you're gonna have to have um, a product to clean your brushes. You have to read the can, paint thinner, mineral spirits. Usually work on that. All right, so here we go. Now, if you're gonna use a stain, be sure to practice on a sample board of the same substrate that you're gonna be going over because every single thing that you go over is gonna react differently to a stain. Some materials will grab that stain and you won't be able to drag it off. Some, it won't affect at all and you'll really be able to slide that off. makes for a very pretty stain. And again, you can kind of go in your highs and lows wherever you want to see a little more depth and a little more character in there. So several different glazes, 
several different looks. And I think I'm really liking the darker just because I know I'm going to go do another step where I can bring in some depth. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then I'm going to go back and do the whole board with my first glaze, which is the general finishes uh, glaze effects. Um, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I've cleaned off most of the glaze and I'm going to go back and we're going to do the whole board with the general finishes pre-made glaze. Now, because I ran my roller in three separate runs, my pattern looks like planks of wood. I want to play off of that. I want to keep the line between the two rollers dark so it actually looks like two pieces of wood have been put together and you're seeing that line. So keep that in mind as we pull off the glaze that I'm gonna leave a little more in those edges on those lines so it looks like a real piece of wood. That's the fun part about doing faux finishing is that you can create illusions that maybe occurs naturally. Because it's a wood grain, I want to make sure after I kind of get it in all those lows, really push that product down into those areas that I finish up dragging so that I'm creating a strie type look. All right, I don't want my glaze to dry too fast. That's why I'm not gonna do a big area all at once. I wanna do small areas and pay attention to that. So here we go, dragging it off. Very careful to go in a straight line and not pull too much off where I'm trying to give the look of the two pieces of wood coming together. Also, I don't want my pieces of wood to be exactly the same color. If you've ever built a table out of uh, planks of wood and stained them, the stain picks up a little different on each piece of wood, giving it that depth and that character. So this piece, I'm gonna leave a little darker than my first piece. Now, it's a little darker than I wanted, so I'm gonna add some water. And now I'm gonna pull it off in strategic places. I'm going for that driftwood look. That's why I'm doing everything with grays. And I'm gonna clean this edge up over here and get me a really clean line here. All right, next one. So on this one, I'm not gonna do it quite as dark. So I'm gonna put some water down first so that my material is gonna be a little thinner do my line. And I'm not gonna let that sit quite as long. I'm gonna pull that off pretty quick. I do have a little bit of a line here because this is the area that I use the stain and it did stain the paint a little more than the water-based uh, glazes that I used earlier. But I can do some playing with that and hide that line. All right, so I'm really liking this. I think I'm gonna come back to our very first one and I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadowing now, maybe to my edge. 
make it look a little. Go down the middle, highlight that line, same thing here. Kind of go to the edge. Again, I'm just playing. I'm just making it look a little more worn and realistic. I also have a problem knowing when to stop in my faux finishing like I do my epoxy. So I'm gonna come back with my cheesecloth, wet it down a little bit, and rub those edges. Now I have a really neat shadowing effect. There. This is definitely a fun project for those that like to be super creative and like to boot layers and layers. Not one of the fastest finishes you'll do, but it's super customizable and it's super fun. Depending on what kind of glaze you're using, like anything else, takes a little bit of practice but it's also a lot of fun. I think I'm gonna lighten this one up a little bit. Since this is the middle one between the two dark, I'm gonna lighten it up a hair. Now you see how I'm just barely rubbing that and it's coming back off and it's giving me my highs and still leaving material in the low areas. Cause I really like how that's pulling off now and coming in and those highs are getting pretty light, giving me a lot of depth. I really like that. I went back over it. I wanted to darken it up a little bit. Keep changing my mind. So we're gonna let this dry. We'll come back. We'll hit it with a little bit of dry brushing to make it look very realistic. And then we'll throw some epoxy over it. So we've let this set. The uh, glaze is dry. So now with the dry brush, I'm gonna come back with a white. I just wanna dry brush the highs. Now we're gonna give some depth and make it look even more realistic. So we'll start off with the brush and I'm just gonna use this bare paint and primer in one. You can use just about whatever you want. The key to dry brushing is to do just that, use almost a dry brush. So I've put some product on my brush. Now I'm gonna take that and I'm actually gonna rub it off on a cloth. Almost to the point where you really don't think that you have any brush, any paint on your brush. So you'll wanna start in a corner. So if you do have too much paint, you can rub that off. But I'm gonna very lightly, I'm just gonna kinda of come back and forth and all I'm gonna do is very lightly hit those highs. And I don't have to hit the whole piece. I may wanna just come into certain areas where I know there's highs that I want to kinda highlight and just hit those areas, which is kinda what I'm doing. And now what I've done is I've made this piece look even more 3D than it was before. Add a little more paint, take it off very, very lightly. I always get my hand going first and then I go down. This is one of my favorite techniques to add depth when I was doing a lot of faux finishing because you could actually dry brush, layer it with different colors and just make it look incredible. So now look at the difference in the pieces that I've touched. This has been dry brushed, this has not been. So you could really kind of see, I don't know if the camera's gonna let you pick that up or not, but if you were in person, you would really see the depth that this is creating. I haven't added any more paint. I'm gonna go to the next piece. Very, very tiny amount of paint. You'll be actually shocked at how much actual paint it takes to do a dry brush. You can go a different direction, 
so that you hit those highs at a different direction. Now, I hit it a little bit too much there and I got a line with my paint. So I'm gonna come back with a towel and I'm gonna take that off. I could come back even with a black and I could highlight, I could hit it again and that would give me some depth as well. So many things you can do. But I think I'm gonna stop on this piece now and we're gonna go to the next uh, step by adding some epoxy now. I told you I was horrible at stopping. So in the break, I decided I was gonna add a little bit of bling to this. So I brought out the big guns, metallic paint by Modern Masters, my all time favorite metallic paint. Same brush, haven't even cleaned it, just dried it off really well. I'm gonna add a little bit of metallic and we're gonna dry brush and see what that does to it. Now this, I'm actually going over the whole piece because I want some of that metallic to go on the flat areas. Add a little bit more and take it all back off. So we're gonna go to the next step. We're going to apply a flood coat uh, of stone coat countertop epoxy. I've mixed up three ounces per square foot. I'm gonna flood this and then we're gonna leave it alone. I just want a clear finish. I'm not gonna add anything to the epoxy. Um, and then this particular type of finish, a wood finish looks really gorgeous when you do a matte finish. It really makes that wood uh, or the piece look like real wood. So that's what we're gonna do here. Lay it out, very simple. Now, if this were going to be uh, maybe a, a countertop or a table I was gonna use a lot, where I know it was gonna have a lot of uh, usage and it needed to be very durable, I probably would do two coats of the epoxy just for durability. I'm gonna use my hand just because it's a smaller piece. I don't need to use the trial. Now I have not prepped these edges. This is just a sample board, but if this were a piece I was gonna be actually using, I would have rounded over my edges. I would have painted my edges so that they were more finished and looked like an actual piece of wood. So when you add that epoxy, it really does take this to the next level brings out all those highlights. All right, we'll torch it and then we're gonna be done. Okay, so a very fun, easy way to take a plain piece of MDF and turn it into a piece that looks like planks of wood. You could do this on top of a piece of furniture. Uh, you could do it on a table. Just about anything that you can lay down your texture medium on and get a great finish. You could do this in browns. I chose to do it in grays. Uh, endless combinations of what you can do. Guys, I hope you like this video. I hope you like the change of scenery a little bit and uh, other ways that you can incorporate epoxy into maybe something that you're already doing. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell to subscribe to future notifications and leave me some comments. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this, more faux finishing where we incorporate uh, the epoxy as well. Until next time, remember, don't be scared, move forward and be creative. <laughs>